11 to 15. Now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you to, today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commands, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to, po to possess. This is the word of the Lord. You don't choose this, you choose death. And it goes into talking about destruction is what will be the outcome of that. And, and, then, um, and then verses 19 through 20 I want to read because it goes along with that. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice, hold fast to him for the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I just closed my sermon. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I kind of am going to because, do you know, I've worked on the sermon, okay? I come prepared, okay? And I was at first service and all of a sudden I was getting inspiration that didn't come when I was at my desk. And it was like, this is a little weight, God. I got to figure out where to put this in and all that kind of stuff. So, so I, do, I do have some things that are just kind of stirring. And they all, it's all part of my sermon. It all goes well. But it was just, it, it was just uh, things, to, things to say a little differently or add or what, whatever. But, but um, I, I, I want you to know that if we choose... Not to say yes to God. I believe your many reasons could boil down to one reason. And it is that we don't see God for who he is. If we saw God for who he truly is, no one in their right mind would say no to that. But God is invisible. We have to... Put faith in someone. Casey said the other night, Christians are weird because they believe in something they can't see. I, okay, you know, I, there's truth there, okay? It doesn't mean he's not real. It does kind of complicate the relationship. Am I talking to myself or is there somebody there? You know what I mean? But I'm telling you, if we saw accurately, more completely, the nature of God, the quality of God, who he is, no one in their right mind would say no to him. But this world has temptations and lures and there's all kinds of things that get in our way. And then we Christians don't see him clearly and we don't represent him appropriately. And so people get all, all messed up. And and. And sometimes we see part of God, but we don't see how that relates to the other parts of God. For example, some of us think God is a God of no. Um, and it's true. God says, don't do this. Don't do that. And we, and we focus on, man, if I only didn't have to follow God, I could do whatever I wanted to. But God restricts me. And if, if that's your attitude toward God, because God says no to some things, then I can understand why you got a skewed view of God. 
the thing of it is, is God doesn't say no because he loves to see us suffer. God says no because he's the one who created this physical world. And he knows if you jump off a skyscraper, you become splat. You know what I mean? Morally, God created this world so that certain things work. There's spiritual gravity. And you're going to be way down if you don't go along with the creation as far as what brings life, what brings health, what brings happiness, what makes a relationship work. And if you say, I'm going to defy that, I'm going to go against it. Well, you're doing it at your own peril because you are, don't get to create the way the systems of the world work. You are not God. But when you want to be God of your life, when, when you want to be king and Lord, and you don't want anyone telling you what to do or how to live, and you're going to strike out on your own, your kingdom is going to splat. It's going to happen because you don't get to make the laws of the universe. Those laws are there for your benefit, for your life, for your health, for your relationships. They are there for a reason. Now, because of this gift of this free will, we've already talked about this, that is the most explosive, dangerous gift you get to choose. It doesn't mean that you'll choose wisely but you'll get to choose. And this is where the scripture is today. The, the context is Moses helped lead the people from slavery in Egypt with the promise that God's plan, God's will, is that they enter the promised land where there will be enough where it will be fruitful, where they will have victory, where they will learn how to overcome and fight and win. All of that is the direction of God's blessing from slavery to this life. I don't want to say of ease, but this life where they don't have to live in panic. In between was the wilderness. And those people who were freed from slavery now in the wilderness feel, well, I don't want manna again. I want steak. And they grumbled and they didn't trust God. And, 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 and again, they couldn't see God. So they made something that they could see like everybody else and tried to worship something that wasn't real as if it was. And it's like, it's not going to work. So, now, that generation has pretty much died off. And this younger generation is raised up and Moses is an old man and Moses knows that he's been prepping Joshua to take his place according to God's calling. And so now Moses is preparing the people. Here they are. Here is um, the river Jordan and here is the promised land. They can look out and see it. And here he gathers the, the nation and, and he kind of tells them, today you choose. You choose right, tomorrow or soon. That is your life. Choose life. Choose life. And so he really says, here you are. And there's a fork in the road. You're going to choose to go left or you're going to choose to go right. You're going to choose which way you're going to go. And it's up to you to choose. But I'm telling you, it doesn't mean that these choices are equal. You go this direction and you're going to experience life and blessings and, and, and prosperity. And if you go this way, you're going to experience your own destruction because you're going against the will or the bent or the direction that God has for you in life. Now, every choice is important. 
every choice affects every next choice. That's how we build our life. You know what? Tomorrow morning, I'm to get, going to get up, I'm going to brush my teeth, I'm going to go to the office, I'm going to prepare the bulletin, I'm going to do Care Central, I'm going to go out for lunch, I'm probably going to go visit some people, and I'm going to come to Shalom and, and pray um, tomorrow night. And, and I, I, I have this routine, I have these decisions, and, and they're all important and they all make a difference, but tomorrow may be a pretty routine day. But there are days and there are times where God will speak to me and I will either say a monumental resounding yes or an absolute no. And there are things that I will decide and that you will decide that what I would call cornerstone choices. They're more significant. They are powerful because it's a fork in the road. We, I decide that day either to trust God or to go it my own way. And that is very important. Sometimes you have a cornerstone choice and you think it's just, just an everyday choice. It's not. It can change the direction of your life. But the best way to make those most important choices about how we're going to live is to do it when you're not under pressure, to do it when you've got your Bible open, to do it when you're praying and when you're asking the Holy Spirit to give you the power and the strength to say yes to his direction and his will. What are you going to do with your life? By the way, next Sunday, I'm going to talk about vocations and God's will. Okay, that's next Sunday. But as I was preaching, I saw Doc Hamilton. You guys know Doc Hamilton. He's 95. He comes here and everything. Well, there was a day when he just got married and he really... Um, had hopes to, hopes to go and be a doctor. But he got married and essentially uh, he thought, well, now I've got to take care of my wife. Well, well, Mary Lou Hamilton said to him, you know what? This, she, when he was like floundering there, she said, you know what? I'm not going to marry you if you don't go, get, go, go to uh, doctor school. Well, I, I don't see how I'm going to be able to afford that. You know what? He made a decision to change the course of his life in order to be a doctor. Now, that one decision has affected thousands of decisions by that one cornerstone choice. It meant he was going to study when other people were partying. It meant he was going to pursue when he'd rather quit. It meant that he was going to have to go through these rigors and routines. And he did. And as a result, his life has been significant. He began the anesthesiology department at, at, uh, at that college, that, that hospital. Memorial. Memorial, thank you. Beacon, beacon. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and, and he's had this wonderful life. And, I mean, but that choice about what do I do with my vocation made it so much easier to make those thousands of other choices. Same thing with me. It made no sense for me to be a pastor. Honestly, it didn't. I don't have money to go to college and, and, and I don't have a brain and I can't do this. And I, you know. By the way, Moses when God said to Moses, I'm calling you. I want a cornerstone choice for you. I want you to take the people and, and es- to help them escape um, slavery. Um, Moses said, uh-uh, not me. I-, I couldn't do that. But God spoke to him and he made a cornerstone choice that I will do what God wants me to do. 
Now, I'm telling you here, you're at a fork in a road, and you may not know it's a fork, and you have an opportunity to realize that God is a yes God. God is the God of yes, not the God of no. You say yes to him, and it might not be immediate, it might not be eventual, it might, but ultimately, I'm telling you, your life is going to count for something, and it will be blessed and favored, and you will prosper in some way or another, okay? Your life will be better by saying yes to God than by saying yes to you being in charge of your life. It will happen. It will be true. It may not be immediate. You may not know it immediately, but it will. (sighs) Jesus Christ is God's evidence that you are loved. God allowed Jesus to come to earth so we could visibly see a tangible representation that is breathing and living of what God is like and who he is. And then Jesus died as an atoning sacrifice for us so that you and I can have an idea that God loves us so much that he wants to experience the pain that we deserve. He loves us that much. If we can see God's holiness and love, God's justice and mercy, not as opposites, not as intention fighting each other, but all united, all together in one God, he is morally perfect and 100% compassionate. If we can see his character and his nature as it is, we can say yes. Now, what, what Moses said here is, is I'm going to give you the bottom line. The bottom line is either or. Either you say yes to God and you experience life, or you say no to God and you experience destruction. It's simple. It's simple. He says, I, I love how he says, he says, you don't have to go up to heaven and find this, God's come down to you to tell you this. You don't have to cross the sea and find some spiritual guru who will tell you mystically this. You don't have to do that because God has brought this truth right to you, right in your mouth and right in your heart. Like, you know it. You know it. Intuitively, Think about it. God's love is very near to you. Please, realize this is simple. Now, I'm not saying simple and easy are the same in this world. But it's not that complicated. And he says, not only this, I'm not asking you to do something impossible. No, you can do this. It's a simple yes. I want to talk to our young people. When I was in the Wesleyan church as a Wesleyan pastor, we would bring our youth to these huge youth conventions. They were between Christmas and New Year's. And they were in some big city. So our little, little town church We'd gather up our youth and we'd have fundraise and we'd go to these huge conventions. And they were really great. They had the best speakers. I don't know if any of you know who Josh McDowell is, but Josh McDowell used to travel college campuses and tell how relevant Jesus is and all that kind of stuff. He was really good. I think he's still around. He's written numerous books and things. He's wonderful. He's on the radio a lot. Anyhow, Josh McDowell was a speaker and he had this audience of youth. And, and what he's saying is, those big decisions in life, we need to make them, not when we're under pressure. We need to predetermine what we're going to do when we're in the midst of temptation. So we'll be armed, equipped, 
prepared to resist and say no. And so I still remember this. He said, hey, you may find yourself sometime in a carload of other teenagers. And you're just going and having fun and everybody's laughing. And of course, the driver is a few years older. And he gets out of his pocket. Weed. Bunt. Is it Marjorie? Marjorie? Mar- Marge? Marge something? Pot. Okay? By the way, I tried to look it up to see what it's called today. Okay? On the internet. <laughs> Mary Jane? Okay, Mary Jane. Okay. I don't know. I, apologies to Margie. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so this cool driver here, he lights it up because he's really cool. <sighs> he takes the drag. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's what, I've, I've really done this before, right? Really, like, yeah, yeah. He takes the drag and, and, um, and he passes it to the guy on the passenger side. Well, the guy on the passenger side is up front because he's cool too. So he takes, he takes it. <sighs> ah, that's good, Mary Jane. <laughs> <laughs> and he passes it to the back seat. Now you're in the middle and there's a guy next to you and you know it's going to be coming your way. If you wait to decide whether to do it at that moment and you haven't predetermined what you're going to do, how you're going to respond at that moment, you're going to be cool. Probably. But if before you got in that car and and you read Deuteronomy 30 or something like that, it's everywhere in the Bible, I have a way for you. It's right it will not lead you astray. It will, it, it will be a better way. And if you determine this is not that, then when it comes to you, you don't need to be preachy and you don't need to be judgmental, but you can say, no, no, I'm going to a different place. I'm not, I'm not going to participate in this. And you know what? The guy next to you, perhaps with all his heart or her heart, did not want to do that, but wasn't prepared to say no. But now can, because you just did. I'm telling you, That was a cornerstone decision. But it wasn't made at the moment of the pressure. It was made between you and God where you determine, hey God, I want to have resolve to say yes to you. And saying yes to God makes those saying no things, it puts it in perspective. Now, I got smarter this week and I want you to know that I know a new term. It's really not new. It's been around for maybe a, de- a decade. But I never knew about it till today. Now, or, or the other day. Okay. Listen to this. If you really want to feel sad for somebody, feel sad for the planet Pluto. Ten years ago or so, Pluto was demoted. The astro scientists said, I don't know if Pluto should be a planet or not. Before this, it had the distinction of being the outermost planet revolving around the sun, and it had the esteem of being a planet. But somehow or another, depending on how you define planet, Pluto is now held in suspicion. By the way, 
the astro-scientists, I found out by research, are trying to decide whether to reinstate Pluto as a planet or not. So the debate continues. But from that cosmic decision has come a new term. If you have been Plutoed, you have been devalued or demoted. Okay? So, anybody here been Plutoed? Do you feel your life is Pluto? <laughs> you know, can you, can you go along with this? Now, the question is, how do I apply this to my sermon? <laughs> so that you know how smart I am. Here's what I want to say. I want you to Pluto yourself. To God. Because when... I don't see God clearly. My view of myself is distorted. And when I don't think God is holy or perfect or just or, or valued, then I take charge of Brian. And I become my own I don't become Pluto, I really become the sun and everything revolves around me. Now here's what, here's what I want to say. If you have become the king of yourself, King Brian, and your kingdom is splatting, new term, <laughs> If you will wake up and realize I might be a better prince than a king. You are demoting from king of my own universe to prince with the God, my father king, being promoted to where he ought to be. What's appropriate for him as God? If we Pluto ourselves and see he has life and prosperity and blessing and favor, maybe not immediately, but ultimately and eternally, maybe immediately too. If we will just say, this is my cornerstone decision. I will surrender to the God who created the universe and knows me best. And I will say yes to the fork in, in the road. Yes to him. That will be your cornerstone choice that will determine a thousand other choices. And I invite you to Pluto yourself today. <laughs> Doc, Doc Hamilton said to me, the problem with most people is they don't make a choice after service. And I said, yeah. But you know, if you don't make a choice, that is a no. You've chosen no, even though you're not courageous enough to say no. But that was right. So I invite you to come and say yes to God and, um, and just don't be Plutoed, but Pluto yourself to God which is really not devaluing yourself at all. Okay.